Welcome to another tutorial where I show you how to shoot high quality product photos from the comfort of your own home with a minimal and affordable setup. So we are gonna be creating these photos here today featuring the can liquid death. Now the feature of these photos is the dry ice. I had some dry ice on hand, so we have made that the focus of today's video. Now, before we get stuck into the behind the scenes, if there's anything specific that you would like to see in this series, any specific product you'd like me to shoot, drop it in the comments. Now let's dive straight into the behind the scenes and create these photos. Now, if you've been sitting there thinking, I wanna do this for real, but I've got no gear, no clients, and honestly, no clue where to even start, Welcome, you're exactly who I made become a brand photographer for. I've had students go from zero clue to booking their biggest jobs ever, doubling their rates, going full time, and no, it's not luck. They followed the process. You get in-depth behind the scenes shoots, real Photoshop workflows, how to price your work, pitch to brands with real strategy, contracts, pre-production, the full system. This is what I wish existed when I was starting out instead of wasting years Googling everything. Every day you sit on the sidelines, someone else is out there getting the job, building the brand, living the life you keep saying you want. You're not stuck, you're just waiting. The link's in the description. The only thing standing between you and the life you want is action. So let's get started and set up our scene. The first thing that I'm gonna do is put down this large acrylic mirror because we're gonna be creating a really cool reflection with the surface. Now you can get these mirrors from like your local hardware store if you're in Australia. Bunnings, I think they're about like $90, so not too bad. We're then going to set up our background. I'm just gonna use a block as my background holder and we're going black. So I'm gonna use a black foam board and just bring that right to the edge of the mirror. I only need a tiny little area. You can see it's even got a crease in the middle, but we can Photoshop that out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is basically set up my base scene, get my lighting right, and then we're gonna add in the dry ice once everything is dialed in. So we're gonna bring in our diffusion first, and that's this is just like from a five-in-one reflector, really cheap, they're like 30 bucks, 30 to 50 dollars on Amazon and our lights, which is a Godox AD200 Pro. Now for my lens, I'm using a Canon 24 to 70 mil and I'm shooting on 70 mil. You could honestly use a 90 mil, 100 mil, 50, like whatever floats your boat really. Um, it's still gonna look good. Now, as for my light position, I've got it on the side and I would say it's a tiny bit more leaning towards the back. So it's not perfectly side on, it's a little bit to the back of the product. And that's just hitting the product really nicely on this side. Now, with the highlights, the rest is gonna be done in Photoshop. I recognize that there are gonna be a couple of discrepancies with how the highlights hit the can, but that's why we learn Photoshop. Now there's two other ingredients that I want to add to this photo. One is condensation on the can. So we're going to use glycerin and water for that. And then obviously the dry ice. So the next thing we're going to do is put some condensation onto our can. So we're going to use a mixture of glycerin and water. So I've got that in a little spray pump here and we're just going to spray it onto the can like that. Now, excuse the very dirty screen, but I want to fix up this light reflection here because obviously this label is gold and I wanna bring more of that gold to the label. So we need to add in another whiteboard. So I've got another whiteboard here and I'm gonna put that just on the other side of my lens. And I'm gonna take that shot. Now I'm just gonna slightly and then the other one so that it touches my lens so that we really are dealing with these reflections. That's definitely a lot better. I'm really happy with that. So this is the before, and this is the after, just by adding in that white foam board, we've really dealt with this part of the label. So we are now ready to put in the dry ice. So this is our dry ice in this Esky. Now you don't wanna to touch it with your bare hands because it will burn. I've got my husband here helping today. Yes. <laughs> He's gonna be doing the dry ice part. 
And the goal is to get the dry ice around, to wrap around the product. Right. So we are going to take our first shot and we're just going to see how this turns out. Let's try it out. All right, I'll just get into position. Mm -hmm. So we have our original photo here and I'm going to show you how we go from this to something like this that is just a, a little bit more interesting. Now the differences that you'll see are the little highlight we have here on the left side of the can and this beautiful little highlight on the top of the can here. So as we can see on this original image, we don't have that. It's looking a little bit flat. And you know, that's probably a result of not having the correct lighting on hand to be able to do this. But I'm gonna show you just how easy it was to create these little spots of highlighting that really just bring that can to life a little bit more. So we are going to use this image. This was created by ChatGPT. Now this background image you see here is a separate image we did for another, um, another photo. So this is like literally the image. I've just taken away that chainsaw and the writing, and this is what we're left with. So this is a separate image in itself. And all we've done is put it on the background. But what we're gonna do is mask in this beautiful little highlighted area here onto our original can. So we're just gonna grab this. I might just get that little bit there too. Copy, so we've made our selection. Um, we're gonna go to this one here, this is where we are at. And we're gonna go paste. So now we just need to line up I'm just gonna drop my opacity a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And we're gonna line up that there. Make sure it's on the edge. Slightly distort that a little bit. Like so, okay. Now, all we have to do is mask this out. So we're gonna create a mask on that grab our brush tool, make that smaller, put it to black, opacity 100%, and we're just going to get rid of that side. Alrighty. Now I'm just going to lower my opacity a little bit so I can feather this and blend it a little bit more. Okay, so let's have a look at the before and the after. So it's just created that really beautiful edge light that we want for our new image. So that was really easy. Uh, next, where are we here? We're gonna go to this one. We're gonna take this little highlight here, so I'm gonna use my lasso tool. Let's just, again, you can mask the bits out that you don't want to use. Um, actually, let me do that again. I think that's a good selection because I just really love this little highlight here. Also that condensation looks really good, so let's Paste that in and we'll zoom in here. And we're just going to kind of line it up with where it would be. So it was about, I feel like there is good. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Again, we're gonna create a mask, grab our brush tool. I'm just gonna have the opacity around like 70%. And we're just going to gently mask that in. That's actually probably a bit too much. Let's bring that down. So you can really blend that. 
Make sure these little spots are all taken out. Okay, there we go. So if we group these together, before and after. So this is obviously a very different way of adding in some highlights uh, and edge lighting to a product. Um, I've never done it this way before, but you know what? <laughs> it just works and I don't care. It just works so well. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is replace our background. So the first thing we have to do is just make a selection of our can and yeah, we'll do that here as well. Doesn't really, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, yeah, I reckon we'll just do it like that. Look, if you're ever making a selection, typically using your pen tool is always gonna be the most accurate and clean and sharp way to get your selection, but this is, I just, I don't need to do that. <laughs> so, for this, we're gonna go select and mask, output to new layer with layer mask. There we go. And we're going to grab this photo here. So this one was created in ChatGPT. So this is, this is AI, this is us blending AI with real product photos. It's fun. <laughs> okay, so let's just pop that there. Now we have to do a bit more masking because this doesn't look as good. So we're just going to drop this opacity a bit more. Kind of like feather, feather that out. Just remove that harsh line. Oh, not the can. And then just feather that in a little bit. Okay, that looks good. And then I just wanna bring a little bit of that background in down here. So uh, yeah, that's a good opacity. We're just going to just mask a little bit there, a little bit there. So it blends in with that background nicely. Just bring a bit more of that back. Okay. And that is how we come to the final image, which is this one here. So it's just a great example of how we can start to blend AI with real product images, get creative. This is so not my usual style. This really is just me experimenting with things, but like, I think this is cool. Now I took this photo one step further and I wanted to add a little bit of motion to it. So as you can see, we have the smoke going around the can and we've got a bit of movement with the dead guy at the back. And like, this is just a cool and fun way to start turning your stills into motion stills and add that movement, add more of a dynamic point of interest to the photos. Now, the only thing with this one is that it kind of fucked up a little bit of the writing on the can. You can't actually see it that much, but if you zoomed in, you could. So that's still a problem, but like, this is kind of cool. Now for our next scene, we're gonna be shooting the gold mango flavored can. We've got these highly reflective mirror boxes. These are just from Timo, by the way. So, my thought pattern is we're going to have the can sitting on top of these and then we've got the dry ice behind and in front to give it like that really beautiful bold hero shot. And I think the gold and the black works in really well with the branding of the can. So I'm gonna have this one here and then to add a little bit more visual interest, I'm gonna bring in this one and then put my can like that there. Now, the harder part about this shot is obviously dealing with the reflective surfaces. And honestly, part of being, I believe, a good product photographer is knowing how to deal with different types of materials so that you can shoot all different types of products. So what we're going to do is leave that there. Now, we have to look at where our reflections are coming from, okay? So obviously we need to have white reflecting back into this side of the boxes. So we're gonna bring in a white foam board and really just like cut that off there, kind of 
like barricade this set. Put our water bottle there to hold it up. Now, to deal with the front of the scene because our light is like to the left, to the back, we're gonna be using a white foam board barricading the scene like this. So that is going to illuminate more of the front of the can um, and that's gonna deal with the can reflection as well. Now for our dry ice, we've got one in this, you can see it's already frozen, <laughs> but we're gonna put one in this gold cup at the back and then a smaller bowl at the front. I don't want something like the gold cup at the front because then the smoke is gonna to be too high and I still want it low so that we can see the gold blocks. So we're just gonna like pop it there. Now the final part to this is dealing with the reflection of the can up here. So we've got this small little white foam board and we're just gonna hold it round about there so that we reflect back into the top of the can. It just adds a little bit more oomph to the photo. So our light is over here and I would say that's like, I don't know, 50 centimeters away from my diffusion and I've double diffused. So I've put diffusion fabric over top of the reflector or diffusion. Um, what I found is that just having the one diffusion here the, the highlight was just a bit too strong for my liking. So if you need to soften your highlights, you want to double diffuse. You might want to use a softbox. I just don't have a softbox at home here. So this fabric, it's literally like, I don't know, $20 to $30, it's so cheap. Um, it's a great piece of equipment in your kit that can easily help soften those highlights a little bit. And you can also bring your light further away from your subject and further away from your diffusion. So be careful with your highlights and if you think it's too hot, it probably is and you just need to play around with the distance between your light and the diffusion and whether or not you add another layer of diffusion. Look good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. This? Yep. See when you are. And then I did the same with this one, turned this photo into a motion still. It's again, it's just kind of crazy. We've got the chainsaw flashing, his eyes are flashing. We've got lasers coming from the mango chainsaw sign. Like it is wild just the things that we can do now this is using cling ai and i think it's going to be really interesting to see how we can incorporate this into our actual client work so i actually love how these photos turned out and this is a very different style for me as well i don't really shoot on a black background that often i don't shoot beverages either but this was really fun one of my favorite things to incorporate is dry ice or a smoke effect i just think it looks so freaking cool and dry ice is not an expensive prop either so i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you have any questions leave the comment down below if you're loving this series hit subscribe that actually really helps and if there's anything specific you'd like to see drop a comment and let me know and maybe i'll add it to the list